Hey everybody, welcome to my video on the Fisker Ocean Towing. This is my Fisker Ocean 1, which is optioned with the full towing package. That includes a hitch receiver underneath this cover, as well as a outlet for powering items. In this video, I'm gonna be covering all different types of accessories that you can use with the towing, along with hooking up things to the outlet to power and see how they work. So let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is how to remove the cover off of the hitch itself. This cover is held in place with a clip along the back and there's two screws in the front that hold it in. These screws are captive screws. They're plastic with a little um, handle on them. You just turn them a quarter turn clockwise and it's loose and this cover will be loose in the front and then you can just pull it off. You can pull it on each side, it will snap. As you can see here, there are one, two, three, four, five clips holding it in place. And I'll put that aside. Now we have a closer look at the hitch itself. If you remember in one of my earlier videos, I did a hidden storage bin inside the hitch which keeps emergency tools. Let me take that out now. These tools are for opening the hood which is pretty handy to have. With that removed you can see the two inch hitch. This is a standard two inch hitch and it can accept many accessories, including mounts, bike racks, uh, storage bins, etc. To the right of that is the power outlet. This is a seven pin power outlet. I'll flip that up so you can see inside. There are other towing outlets too that are out there. I've seen four pin and five pin, and I have an adapter that I'll show you for those. So if you're towing something that doesn't have a seven pin plug on it, you can use one of these adapters. I have links in the video description. This right here is the seven pin side that gets inserted into the car. And then on the other side, there's the four pin on this side and the five pin on this side, depending on what wiring you're using. And then this would just plug in to here. So I'll lift that up. And it would get inserted like that. And then when you're done, you just pull it out and let the flap go down. On the side of the hitch receiver, we have a little label right here. And that gives some restrictions on where you can place a hitch ball into the mount. It shows a max of eight and a half inches from where the hitch pin goes in to where the ball is. And it also lists a three quarter inch rise. So the important thing to know is the hitch pin hole that's right here. You will use a hitch pin. I have several of them. They usually come with locks. For example, you remove the lock end and then you can insert this into the opening and it will come out the other side. So for example, if you are attaching anything to this hitch opening, you will use the pin to lock it into place so that it will not come out. I'll give you an example right now. Take this one out. Here is a hitch adapter. I'll insert that and notice it has a hitch pin hole here. I'm gonna push it in until the hitch pin hole matches the one that's on the hitch receiver. Then I can insert the hitch pin and then lock it into place. Just give you a better view of this adapter this is used for lowering or raising the hitch receiver. If you're using something like a bike rack or a carrier, 
So this is one that I happen to have. I don't use it very often, but this is just an example of an accessory that you can have that will fit this receiver. So I'll take this out and then remove this. Another hitch accessory that I think is really handy is this. This is called a anti-rattle or hitch tightener. And this is used to keep the accessories from moving when they're attached to the hitch receiver. I'll give you a demonstration. If I put this over the edge of the accessory that I'm putting in there, what you would do is place it in and then you put your hitch pin in. Then you would tighten this down with a wrench. I'll just hand tighten it right now just to give you a quick demonstration of what it does. But I would use like a wrench like this to tighten it all the way. And what this does is this end here covers the lip of the hitch receiver and when this is tightened down the accessory will not be able to move side to side or up or down this keeps it locked into place uh, this is very handy for bike racks or any other accessories that you put in here so i definitely recommend it they're they're not that expensive and um, definitely good for peace of mind so I'll have the link for this also in the video description. And to remove it, you would just loosen it up so that it goes below the lip of the hitch receiver and then the whole thing can come out. The next thing I'm gonna do is install a bike rack, which is probably one of the more common things that you put on a hitch receiver. All I need to do is straighten it up and line it up with the opening. Hard to do at this angle. Slide it in. All right, so I pushed it in until the pinhole matches the accessory to the receiver. Then I just take a pin and insert it, go all the way through, and then I get my lock, and I put the lock on that side. If you're using the anti-sway, if you're using the anti-rattle or hitch tightener, you would tighten this all the way I'm just doing a, a sample just to show you what it would look like. And then you extend this out for when you have your bikes, put that pin in. And then this one happens to hold up to four bicycles on this. Give you a closer look here. So this bike rack holds the bikes at a, a decent distance from the car itself. And here you can see where the hitch receiver is. And this is also one of the nicer racks that actually has a, another uh, pin that you can take out and then you can lower the bikes down that way. It makes it easier to load them. And also you can open the hatch back or lift gate on the car when that's lowered. Like any accessory, don't open your lift gate while you have something attached that the lift gate may hit. And now I will loosen it up. remove the hitch pin 
and then pull the whole thing out straight and place it aside. Here we go with the next accessory that I'm going to install. This is a storage rack or carrier that can be attached to the hitch receiver. And I'm gonna insert that now. All right. All right, that is all the way in. Like before, I take the hitch pin and insert that into the opening. And then put the lock on the other side. I would put the hitch anti-rattle adapter on here and then tighten that down. So that's basically what that looks like. I will give you a better view right here. These are usually made from aluminum or steel and they can carry a variety of items. I've seen people put coolers in them, stacked uh, bins, camping gear. I actually have a bungee cord webbing like this that keeps things in place so they don't fly off on the highway. In addition to the bungee cords I already have installed right here. Let me show you what this looks like from the side. and it is far enough away from the bumper that it won't cause any problems. And you can open the lift gate if you need to, as long as you don't have any tall items on the carrier. Now's a good time to talk about weight limits. One thing that's important to know is never to go above the stated maximums for the towing. There are differences between the Fisker Ocean Sport, which is the front wheel drive and the all wheel drive versions, which is the Ultra Extreme or One. Let me give you some of the numbers for that. If you're towing a trailer with brakes, there's a max of 2,405 pounds or 1,091 kilograms for front wheel drive, or 4,012 pounds or 1,820 kilograms for the all wheel drive. For a non-brake trailer, you can go up to 1,653 pounds or 750 kilograms for the front wheel drive, or up to 1,000, actually, for a non-brake trailer, it's the same for both. They are both the same. And for the draw bar load, which is this, it's also known as the tongue weight. And that's the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch receiver itself. The max for the front wheel drive is 240 pounds or 109 kilograms. And for all wheel drive, it's 401 pounds or 182 kilograms. So this makes a big difference if you have very heavy items in this cargo carrier or on the bike rack. Subtract the weight of the actual uh, carrier or accessory from the total amount. So for example, if this has a 401 pound limit and this weighs 51 pounds, the net amount of stuff that you can put in the carrier is only 350 pounds. So you don't want to go over that amount. And I'm surprised that the four, uh, front wheel drive and the all wheel drive have such big differences between the load numbers. 
But in any case, it is what it is. So I thought you'd like to know that. Since I have the carrier uh, installed right now, I thought it's a good idea to show you some of the other accessories I have. This is a power kit for towing, and this has lights on it. So this could be put on a trailer. And it has on the back a magnet. Let me take this off. And let's see if it sticks on here. There we go, we have a magnet. And then what I'll do is I'll attach this to the power outlet next to the hitch and show you how that works. All right, I have the camera facing the hitch receiver area. And this is the plug. And as you can see, there is a notch on the top here. And this allows the plug only to be inserted in one direction. And it happens to be the same on the car. The top is where the notch goes in, so you'll have it so the notch is facing on top. So let me go do that right now. I will lift up the latch insert the plug with the notch facing up and then push it all the way in it should snap into place and now it's fully seated let's go inside the car and see if anything shows up the first thing i noticed just plugging it in is that there's a little flashing light right here and also here even when the car is not on. So it's like a little bit of a hazard signal. See that right there close up? Let's go inside. Uh, pollen everywhere. All right, let's turn the car on. Oh, trailer connected. That was a really quick message right there. So it said trailer connected. And let's see, is there any accessory information on here? The cup up on driver or safety. Don't say any additional information coming up. All right, so the car knows that a light has been attached. So let's turn on some signals and show you trailer connected. You can see that now. When I have the brake on, you'll see that message come up. All right, so let's do left turn signal. right turn signal. Let's try the hazards. And then let's press the brake. And while I'm holding the brake, let me do the left turn and then right turn. All right, I'll let off the brake. And now let's put it in reverse and see the reverse lights. And by the way, this is the view out the back when you have the hitch used with the carrier. It does block some of your camera the nice thing is you could always switch to your digital mirror if you need to see out the back. 
It's pretty cool that you can use both in conjunction. And I will put it back into park. So those are most of the things that you would see when you're towing. You want to have people behind you know that you're pressing the brake and also using your signals. Basic safety right there. If you want to tow a trailer, one thing you're going to need to have is a ball mount which this is, this is a two inch ball mount on a specialized adapter here. This has actually got a built in wedging system which keeps the mount from moving. So if I insert this in the hitch receiver and what I'm gonna do is make sure it goes in far enough There we go. And then we do the normal insert the hitch pin on one side and then put the lock on the other side. And then this is attached. The next thing we need to do with this version of a ball mount is to lift this up here. There's a little screw here that we tighten and then we tighten that to about, I think it was 30 foot pounds. And what that'll do is that'll keep this locked in. This will wedge and there'll be no side to side or up or down motion. Right now, this is not fully attached. I need to use a wrench on this so that the ball mount is steady enough to use with a trailer. But right now, this is what it would look like. So the trailer would mount over this and you'd be able to tow it. Like I mentioned, you would use the power on the side to have the brakes and the turn signals show up on the trailer. And I definitely want to say consult the owner's manual for towing because there's a lot of information on that, a lot of good hints and tips to use and follow that. Uh, as an owner, you want to be using the manual for anything that's important like towing. All right, that concludes my video today on the Fisker Ocean hitch, including the two inch hitch receiver that I have installed here with the uh, two inch ball for towing a trailer. I also showed accessories such as a bike rack and a car carrier storage rack and also the power port right here that you can attach lights for showing the braking and turn signals on a trailer. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. All the items in the video today, I'll have links in the video description. Maybe not all of them since the bike and the storage carrier, I think I bought uh, several years ago. They may not be the same ones on Amazon but I'll give you very similar ones if you're interested in purchasing. And that about does it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.